You're very welcome back to the show now. During a worldwide pandemic, it is important to try and find some calm. One mindfulness practice which is becoming more and more popular since the arrival of COVID-19 is meditation. Now, studies have shown the benefits against an array of conditions, both physical and mental. But if this is something you've tried and struggled to get the hang of, then our guest today might be able to help you. Sinead Duffy, founder of Yoganda, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. And it's all the buzzwords at the moment, meditation, people are doing yoga, they're doing Pilates, they're doing everything to try and ground themselves a little bit. How did you first become involved in meditation? What was your journey to it? Well, I got into meditation at quite young age. I was 18 when I did Transcendental Meditation, which is a great form of meditation. And then I was traveling around the world and I found an ashram in the South Southeast Asia. And I spent four months there just meditating because it's just such an incredible experience when you can feel that level of calm and sort of control of your mind just to be calm and be present. So I loved it. I was hooked. What actually is meditation? Is there a definition? Because it can be a bit confusing sometimes. It's bandied around quite a lot, but not everything that you might think is meditation, in fact, is meditation. Yeah, I mean, it is quite hard to describe because it's almost a, it's a state of being that kind of exists beyond language. But my definition would be just very simply where we try to quiet the thinking mind and access the older, calmer, more expansive and sort of the part of the mind that feels like you're connected to all things and almost exist out of time. So it's, but trying to, trying to quieten the thinking mind is really difficult and that's what people struggle with. So everybody says, oh, I'm terrible at meditation. But in fact, that's really hard for everybody, no, no matter how long you've been doing it. Yeah. Where do people go wrong, though, when it comes to meditation? I mean, I've tried it many, many times, some more successfully than others. Um, and it, it depends what you do. What are the main faults in the practices of some people? I would say the, mainly the belief that it should be easier than it is. You know, when you say you try to focus on the breath, you'll inhale, exhale, and you'll probably maintain focus. You might get a second breath remaining focused on the breath. You'll rarely get a third. And then you think, oh, I'm just rubbish at this. But actually, everybody is the same. So the practice of meditation is only keeping on doing it. Yeah. Even though you feel like you're rubbish at it, just keeping on doing it because that's what the practice is. And there's various things you can do. Practice on the breath, um, on uh, a mantra. So that's transcendental meditation. You focus on a mantra. And that's quite nice because it's a word or a phrase that you say over and over again, which might be a bit easier for some people. So I would say try a few different types. But also, don't you don't need to keep going shopping. I've tried 17 different types. And that sounds very impressive, but I kind of equate it to, you know, it's like giving up smoking 17 times. It's not a good thing. You only need one. You know, So you don't need to keep trying. Just find one and then settle on it. And you might go deeper. There's very deep kinds like Vipassana, which is 10 days, 10 and a half hours seated meditation a day. So that's at one end. But then another end would be just focusing on the breath, breathing. So really an extension of yoga, yeah. focusing on the breath. I was going to ask you about Vipassana. That sounds quite extreme. Tell me about that and what practicing that led you to achieve. Yeah, well, it is fabulous. It is very deep, you know, to sit cross-legged for 10 and a half hours in a day for 10 days is a pretty deep practice, but it's amazing. It's probably not for everybody, but if you're really into meditation, you've been practicing for a while, I'd really recommend it. So I did that in India. And uh, and yeah, I had, when I went to India to do my teacher training for yoga, I brought my essential oils with me, really for self-care rather than anything meditative. But while I was there and in this very deep state of meditation, I smelt my oils and I could feel how they were kind of like a backstage pass to the med meditative mind. They just brought you straight into that zone. So I thought, you know, this is this is something I hadn't known before. Mm. But it, it, it makes sense because sandalwood and frankincense and all these beautiful herbs have been used in every major meditative tradition forever. Yeah. So and that this, was kind of my discovery. Yeah, the sense of smell is the most evocative. You, you, a scent that will bring you back to childhood. You smell something else, it'll bring you back to a good, a good time you had. It's, it triggers these wonderful memories. And I suppose it makes sense then to marry these two uh, together, your meditative practice and the, the, the sense that these oils arouse. Yeah, it really does. It's, it's, it's something that's so easy and it works and we're just not really using it now. But 
it really makes sense because they immediately change your state of being. And it's something we kind of know, but we don't use. We kind of, we don't race smell that much, but actually when you smell, you feel it instantly. And yeah. particularly with repeated use, because if you associate, as you said, if you associate a fragrance with something, like if you meditate and you use a certain oil, and then you're out and about in the world and you use the same oil, it brings you back to that state. So it's, it's a fabulous little, you know, time hack. Yeah, it's a very anxious time for a lot of people at the moment um, trying to get through life. We just spoke about it before the break. This, this lockdown, people are finding very trying. So I suppose it's more important than ever for, for, for people to try and get some sort of inner peace or calm. Yeah, it really is important for people to be looking after their self-care now. And it's such an opportunity. To, you know, we have this time to just spend time looking after ourselves, looking inward. So it'd be great to develop some well-being practice. Yeah. So I love the essential oils because they're just easy, an easy way to do little rituals in your day. Yeah. And what oils are good? I mean, if anyone's watching this now and they think, oh God, what essential oils would work for me? What will um, calm me down? What will pep me up? I mean, are there, there, are there go-to oils that you believe everyone should have? It's a very personal thing. Of course, lavender is fabulous. Everybody more or less loves lavender. Um, Sandalwood is brilliant for calming the mind. Frankincense is gorgeous. But then the citruses are really sunny, so they're lovely for this time of year. And then uh, then people are, have very personal fragrances. I mean, jasmine is, I think every woman should have jasmine in her life. Rose also is beautiful. So, and then where to start? I mean, I made my oils largely because they're blends because um, people were wondering like, okay, so now I bought the little bottle, what do I do with it? So that's why I made the blends for it to be very easy for people just to use directly on the skin. Mm. So that's what my, my oils are just about, you know, putting on skin directly and feeling better. And they have key benefits like muscle soothe and detoxing and relaxing. I actually spent three years meditating and blending on the well-being goals of my yoga students. That's yeah. how they were born. And, and where can you get your particular blends? So I'm online. I'm also in Kilkenny shop and I'm very proud of that. So kilkennyshop.com and um, because Kilkenny are fabulous for supporting both well-being and uh, Irish, Irish designers. So they've just launched the Revive campaign, which is going on at the moment. And it's just really lovely bite-sized pieces of wellness that people can just listen to on it and watch on Instagram stories. So they have Wednesday wellness. So I'm up on the 17th of February doing a little, um, you know, bite-sized piece of wellness tips at 7 p.m. on the 17th of February. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's a lovely campaign. Yeah. If you if you finally think you're cracking in the meditation thing and you're finding yourself relaxing more and more, I don't know about you when you were doing it, but sometimes I've been known to nod off during meditation. Does that mean you're doing it wrong? I don't think so. I mean, it's you're, ideally you're not supposed to fall asleep, but... You know, my first guru certainly was saying, you know, if you fall asleep, what harm? You have a beautiful sleep and the body needs sleep so much. But ideally, in the in the stricter forms of meditation, you're supposed to get upright, straight spine, and you're not supposed to fall asleep. And actually, essential oils were used to keep monks awake during meditation. Wow. Um, but if you're not off, it's not the end of the world. But if you do want to have, a, you know, in my practice, the ideal is that you would sit up and you know focus on the breath or on a mantra or on something that works for you and it can just be three four minutes i would say to start give yourself a really small goal of focusing on the breath for two minutes yeah that's it but the thing is to do it daily yeah it, it is day it literally you get up you wash your teeth and meditate that sort of routine we should be in yeah ideally yeah, yeah. straight away before you turn on your phone and before all the thoughts come in because what you're doing in meditation is you're asking the thinking mind to be quiet and i kind of equate the thinking mind with a toddler you can't ask it to be quiet it never will so you just have to not turn off the phone not turn on the phone not look at anything and as soon as you start meditating you'll think of a million reasons why oh yeah i can't do this i have to do that and that you know the thinking mind's like no 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 we can't be quiet but you just have to practice sit down don't look at anything that might stimulate you and just sit and just breathe and it's simple as that to get started yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it simple, but yeah, just it's discipline. It's just discipline, right. sitting your bum down and breathing, just okay. that and, and not letting not letting this when it's telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't be just I often actually almost walk sideways onto my yoga mat, you know, because forward feels like I'm engaging the thinking mind more sidestep onto the yoga mat like you're tricking the thinking mind into, into just being quiet for a few <laughs> moments and then just start breathing. And as soon as you start, then 
you know, you get into it and the more you more, the more you practice it, the more you think this is a fabulous experience, you know, so you do get into it. Yeah, I have to say, listening to you, I'm feeling quite calm now myself. Might re retry it again after work today and try and quieten the mind because we all need a bit of a TLC up there these days. Uh, Sinead Duffy, founder of Yoganda, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you.